This is the Criterion Creeps podcast, and tonight we're continuing our delve into the BRD trilogy by Rainer Werner Fassbinder and watching <laughs> Veronica Voss from 1982. The synopsis from <laughs> Letterboxd, RJ. In Munich, 1955, German film star Veronica Voss becomes a drug addict at the mercy of corrupt Dr. Marianne Katz, who keeps her supplied with morphine. After meeting sports writer Robert Crone, Veronica begins to dream of a return to stardom. As the couple's relationship escalates in intensity, Veronica begins seriously planning her return to the screen, only to realize how debilitating she has become through her drug habit. Uh, It's pretty descriptive. It's not too bad. Not too bad not too as far bad. as these have gone. Mm-hmm. So uh, once again, this is a first time viewing for me. Ooh. And uh, I had actually watched a documentary this past week on Fastbinder as discussed last week saying, hey, I wonder if anyone's uh, made one of these here documentaries about this uh, guy. Seems to have lived a pretty exciting life. Mm-hmm. What was it called? It is called, I just have to look it up very quickly here. I don't just want you to love me from 1993. Okay, okay, okay. And uh, any insight into uh, the man behind the, not, the movies? Not a ton. A lot of it, more of it, was about kind of uh, him as a filmmaker. So it wasn't oh, okay. quite. It wasn't quite the uh, the lurid expose. Maybe I was hoping for because he seemed to have lived a pretty like at times lurid. Uh, self-destructive life and you're mm-hmm. thinking like oh man I want all that juice outside of a Wikipedia entry yeah. but um, it wasn't well, quite it wasn't quite here a lot of friends and fa- lots of friends and co-workers and whatnot yeah. reminiscing about uh, how much he accomplished when he died uh, yeah. shortly after this film was released as a matter of fact this came out in 82 and mm-hmm. earlier in the year and by the middle of the year he was dead well, maybe uh, you and John Waters can team up and make that lurid one that you actually were kind of craving for. Maybe, 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 maybe. So yeah, Veronica Voss, first time view for me, and uh, shot in glorious black and white. Yes, it is. Is was that a big deal? Well, I mean, there's a watching this movie, even like in the context of his other films, mm-hmm. the. The film craft, RJ, in this the the, the film production, fine and artisan, thing, pretty uh, pretty off the charts. Not what not what I was expecting. Because uh, a lot of his films like have like kind of a a staged quality to it, and this does too. But they they kind of have like a I don't know kitchen sink look to them. It feels like very lived in spaces where this is like op- opulence. Opulence. No. Opulent. I mean, one of the like what first shots? Of the, oh yeah, the very first shot of this movie is actually this like really amazing again uh, opening credit sequence with these mm-hmm. like uh, you know Fassbender obviously was very much into uh, fonts and typographies mm-hmm. and um, we have these like very um, yeah elaborate old timey uh, mm-hmm. Hollywood looking titles telling you the characters they roll along with these big drop shadows. Mm-hmm. And uh, the movie gets underway, and we get a scene where uh, Veronica Voss, our character, she's mm-hmm. in the theater with a man being played by Rainer Fassbinder right behind <gasps> her, and they're watching footage from one of her old movies. Mm-hmm. And, I didn't really realize that was him. Yes, and so Re- yeah, fun. So an interesting thing with this is that uh, so Fassbinder apparently. The night before he died, he called a friend saying that he had just flushed all his drugs down the toilet and that he was done with that stuff. But he was just saving okay. one last line of Coke. And then the next morning they found him dead. So, Do you they, think it was that one last line? I don't know. But there's something to be said about this movie opening up with uh, Fastbinder himself also watching uh, a movie and beside mm-hmm. the character who's got a drug addiction. In the movie that came uh, out yeah. the same year as uh, his own death due to drug addiction, mm-hmm. I don't know. That that seems to for me that seems uh, an important little detail. So this movie I did, agree. So this movie does a, like a kind of this effortless kind of shifting between flashback and the present and also fantasy, mm-hmm. uh, where you get these like scenes of like Veronica Voss's heyday, where she is like you know in the height of her performances everyone still loves her and is accepting mm-hmm. her the the drugs haven't set in and you get the scene with like like lens flare out the wazoo oh yeah. i got a screen cap of that because P- uh, i thought the quote was also very good yeah <laughs> yeah uh what was it 
Because, like, you're talking right at the start, right? Yes, yeah, yeah, that first scene where it's just, like, overblown. Like, you've never seen anything yeah. quite like this. Like, because usually these scenes are avoided. You don't see those yeah. lights blown up, but clearly it was uh, a pursued look. And that's one thing that, like, this, shooting this black and white uh, lighting is really uh, – I don't know if he's – if it's important – to th- anything mm. in particular or if he's having fun with like really inventive lighting there's this one yeah. scene that's later on in her in the editor's office mm-hmm. um Crohn's editor's office where there's like a fan spinning there's a light source behind the fan that's casting the shadow of the fan on his face but then there's mm-hmm. this giant shadow of the fan blowing behind him mm-hmm. and then there's also uh, like on the reverse with uh Crone, he's in the you know the bullpen and the windows are wide open and there's light coming in, but there's all these like lamps that are also on lighting up the space. Mm-hmm. It's curious. And it's just like him having fun with uh, light and darkness, I guess. Yeah. No. Um. What was I going to say? I, I thought the same thing watching it, like with a lot of those different ones where I was just like, man, I was like, what is, uh, what is this? I was like, why, why don't I get this more? You know what I mean? <laughs> well, cause there's like not, there's no trace of this at all in marriage of Maria Braun yeah. as far as like film. Like it's like completely different, but he really was embracing this, uh, Hollywood kind of filmmaking, uh, this look yep. at least, uh, this classic film anyway. Yeah. Well, yeah. And that's what I thought too. Um, so the lighting scene I thought was really good, but I also like the mm-hmm. quote she's talking and it's all I have left to give you is my death. And I was thinking about you and me and I was thinking about the hit movie from 2000 and, uh, 12 uh the dark knight rises and i know right. that's in one of your best of the decade oh, yes. so uh yeah yeah and people can listen to the preamble to see hear about how much jared appreciates that movie but and, uh, and bane yeah and bane uh i actually did like that quote a lot though i was just like hmm interesting and then uh i liked the the light coming through i was like "Ooh, that's neat no so we transitioned from that scene and uh it seems like she's on harder time she has to leave the theater she's mm-hmm. very upset and then we get some other scene, like we had like kind of a transition though, where she meets this sports writer, this Robert mm-hmm. Crone guy, and the they fall, guy? and they're, they're just they're in love, mm-hmm. and he uh, he he recognizes her, or he doesn't seem like he recognizes her, and he falls under her her spell, and she's like, I still got it, and this guy is giving me all this. Um, uh, confidence in myself that I haven't had for so long, and oh, mm-hmm. I'm like this is so great, and they, they, it's kind of like a kind of a weird parasitic relationship because she's getting something from him and his attentions and he mm-hmm. sees a story, but he also wants mm-hmm. to tell this story as well because he does like have this affection toward this like beautiful woman. He doesn't know what's going on. Mm-hmm. And then it turns out, well, she's a drug addict. <laughs> she's, she's, she's hooked on it. Hanging that needle hanging out of her arm. She needs it. She needs those drugs. And uh, she's going to this, this Dr. Katz woman who I guess you get the sense that she's like a real cat. Yeah. Like there's like kind of a, a lesbian thing going on with her and her, mm-hmm. her, uh, her assistant that's always there, but it's yeah. kind of like in the classic villainous sort of way that it, she would be depicted in a 1950s movie. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's this man uh, that's hanging around. If you recognize him played by Gunter Kaufman, the U S soldier did? who mm-hmm. I don't know if did you RJ think of looking up Gunter Kaufman and say, what's the deal? I uh, no, I was just like, oh, it's like, uh, it's like his guy. He, he indeed, it's his he, guy. He is one of his guys, mm. just oh, like, like Ali. Oh, like sexual? Yes. So oh. I, I, which I didn't know, because he's also in, like, he's been in a few of the movies I've watched with him as well. Because mm-hmm. yeah, he was in Maria and Maria Braun. He probably yeah. is in Lola, but he was also in the Third Generation. He just keeps creeping up. But here's the uh, from Wikipedia right off the bat. Um, in 2002, Kaufman was accused of murder in relation to the 2001 death of Hartmut Hagen, a 60-year-old accountant whom Kaufman's wife had defrauded. The death was ruled accidental, okay. though Kaufman was sentenced to prison for lesser crimes relating to the incident. In 2005, a new police investigation discovered that Kaufman was innocent and had confessed to the crimes to cover up for his late wife, who may have been who have may have been the perpetrator he was subsequently released from prison and resumed his acting career he died in 2002 at 64 fuck 
So yeah, he, so though Kaufman was married when he met Fassbinder, the two men mm-hmm. began, began a romantic relationship. Kaufman is often described as the first major love interest of the director's career. Like many of Fassbinder's relationships, it was troubled, and the director would often try to buy Kaufman's <laughs> affection with expensive presents, particularly cars. During their relationship, Fassbinder married Ingrid Caven, an actress who, like Kaufman, regularly appeared in the director's films and was a member of his tightly knit circle of friends. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, by 71, Fassbinder and Kaufman had split up, and the director began an even more troubled relationship with a Moroccan immigrant, El Hadi bin Salim. Uh, Fassbinder and Kaufman continued working together, though, and Kaufman continued to appear in the director's films, uh, sometimes also contributing songs to the soundtrack. He is in Fassbinder's last movie, Corel, from 1982. Um, Yeah, so there's a lot of uh, stuff, a lot of of life, a lot of life happening uh, in the world of Fassbinder and his films. So stuff like, it doesn't mm-hmm. come through on the screen. In this, he just sings. No. He sings to himself. He wanders around. He acts almost like security. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, again, I can't wait for uh, your biopic here that uh, really gets into the nitty-gritty because it sounds like even the people that he was surrounding himself with in his movies, it sounds like they have uh, tales to tell also. Very good point. Very good point. If you know what I mean. So, uh what happens next in this movie so you get the sense that this dr katz she's not she's she's not good she's not good people mm-hmm. she's uh she cuts you off once you know that money runs out there's mm-hmm. this like sweet old couple that's hanging around they just mm-hmm. they just they just need their candy you find out that uh the husband uh definitely is a survivor of a uh, concentration camp so that's that's fun so he's getting to deal with that and this woman's uh pumping him for money and jewels to keep up her uh, extravagant lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And speaking of lighting, fuck, there's this shot in this movie where there's like the mirror ball, like the disco ball in the ceiling, and it's a completely white room, but you can Mm -hmm. see everything. And like, I don't know how to explain like how difficult shooting something like that and lighting it would be, but I was just like awed at like how complex some of these shots are and these rooms and stuff like that. It's like, yeah, like I said, going back to my comment about this, uh, Fine film craft, mm-hmm. ridiculous, ridiculous. Well, tell me more about fine artisanal film craft, Jared. Um, there, so there's this really great scene when uh, I, I believe it's Crone, right? Crone and uh, Voss when they first kind of mm-hmm. meet and they go running through the rain and they're just thinking, "Hey, you want to go under my umbrella?" And she's like, "Sure." And then they run into the forest and there's no rain. Yeah, <laughs> because it's and a, then it, and then it picks up yeah. again. And then when they get back yeah. to the street, it's raining again. I mm-hmm. loved it. I love that uh, cheesy corniness of that, but it's like so uh, perfect. Because it's mm-hmm. about a it's about this film star and artifice. Yeah, I uh, I thought that was cute too. Yeah. Because I was like, oh hey, look at that. But I was like, you know, sometimes that happens in real life. You can yeah. hit like a patch of rain, and then you can get out of it for a while, and then hit another patch of rain. Mm-hmm. Maybe not like ten feet away, but you know, <laughs> not like this. So yeah. so Crone's on the case. He's he's uh he's getting those he's getting that story, but he's finding resilience and uh, mm-hmm. he's not getting to the truth of it and what's going on. Veronica Voss. So she's kind of like based off of a German actress uh, named Sybil Schmidt, and there's also the obvious kind of uh, allusions to Billy Wilder's Sunset Boulevard. Mm. Right. Ma. Uh, yeah, a little bit. Um. I didn't think that watching it, but now that you bring it up, yeah. yeah. Well, because there's like also it's, it's there yeah. for sure. And there's like the one like song and dance number that um, uh, what's her name? R- is it Rosal Zek? Is the actress playing um, Voss? She uh, does her That's Marlene. Not a real her, name. I think it is Rosal uh, Zek. What the hell? It might be. Okay, sorry. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna research this lady. You tell me more. Confirm for me, please. It, it is. It's. It is Rosal okay. Zek. So she does her Marlene Dietrich impersonation. Mm-hmm. When she does that thing, does a pretty good job. She does, and uh, yeah, and then Sybil Schmidt was the other woman that because apparently she also she died in 1955, and uh, it was like one of those things where she had these relations with uh, with with the Third Reich, landing roles. They, uh, what <laughs> the, the Third? Well, no, this is the thing. I don't know if you picked up. So Veronica Voss, there's these things that oh, she uh, probably slept with Joseph Goebbels during the war. <laughs> Yeah. So it's the same kind of thing. These uh, things about these stars who like did things, and now it's like, well, they have that that taint of uh, Germany's dark history upon them. Mm-hmm. But Robert's into this. He tells his girlfriend Henriette, "Yeah, I'm so in love with this other woman," <laughs> and she's like, "Oh, I see. Well, that's okay. Maybe I can help you out and find out more about the story too." And uh, boy, that takes, and then what happens? That takes a dark fucking turn. 
Mm-hmm. It does, and uh, I actually, I don't know if I'm just daft, but I wasn't really expecting that. And then I was like, oh, yep. oh shit. Soon enough, it's like, hey, I, I'm, I'm going to pretend to go to this doctor, and uh, I need, sure. I need some morphine to show that this doctor's dirty. She's a horrible, horrible person, and she gets it. But boy, you got to protect the business. She gets mysteriously run down, and then everybody just uh, covers for this doctor Katz because she's a, a do- real doctor feel good, as uh, the kids say. Real Nick Riviera. We get a um, follow, and then we find out the system itself is corrupt. We get a. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's the one doctor who works for the state. Um, he's like a regular two of these uh, Fast Binder movies. Is it Doctor Eric Schumann, maybe? And he's like, oh, there's, uh, there's nothing. One? He's the guy who like uh, when he's, oh, he's confronted, go, and there's yeah. like, well, there's nothing we can do. I mean, we. Ha- yeah. I mean, what's good for the state is good for everyone else, I believe. And then of course you start seeing them at dinners with uh, Doctor Katz, and you're like, oh, everyone's complicit. And it's so, like, again, this movie mm-hmm. really kind of spins between like. Like by the end, it's like dark. It's uh, mm-hmm. it starts getting to that requiem for a dream darkness. But it, <laughs> it does, yeah, yeah. And um, yeah. and before that though, you're just having these scenes where like you're almost like marveling. There's the scene where uh, uh, Crone's uh, at the Goebbels. Bo- he's not Goebbels. He's, he's, no, no, <laughs> go, no Goebbels. Uh, he goes to the bar and there's this ridiculous mm-hmm. fan that's above the ceiling and the light's mm-hmm. just crazy. And you're just like, why the fuck would you go to a bar like this? Like, this would be the worst place to hang out. Like, is this this constant it's like a strobe, strobe effect? Light. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, we get some, uh, some filmmaking. We get some scenes on a dolly track where you have a guy looking kind of like eight and a half slash Billy Wilder, uh, with his hat turned up glasses with his scarf <laughs> coming forward. I guess that was a producer. Uh, who's never acted before doing that because uh, mm. Fastbinder likes his uh, non actors mm. and saying, make it work, make it work, figure it out, figure it out, just just do it, just figure it out, go for it. Uh, yeah, and then you get to the end of this movie and uh, it's like, what's happening? Like, is this all going down? Is this like her like fantasy in her head? Is this real? Because it looks like every like the flashbacks in the fantasy are all starting to blur and she's mm-hmm. locked in this room. And she can't get out. And it keeps like, what's what's happening? Is, mm-hmm. every, is everything going to work out okay? No. Well, well it, works, it works out pretty good if you're Dr. Katz. Yeah, I mean, the doctors are in good shape at the end. No. And, I mean, the uh, sports journalist guy, he, well, he he's has, okay. He, he he's a little, little sad. He, he has but... to spy over a hedge <laughs> around a corner yeah. and sees uh, that there's nothing he can do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean... He's got that going for him, but uh, yeah, I don't know. This thing, uh, this thing was way bleaker than I had. Um, like I didn't know anything about it, but when mm. I was watching, it, I was like, "Shit!" <laughs> that was it. And That's all I said. I was like, "Shit!" Shit. And then it ended. Yeah. Yeah. So this movie also fits very nicely into my uh, novelty black and white genre that I've been keeping an eye on. Mm. That seemed to be very popular in the '70s too. Or actually, uh, in late in early '80s, because you have uh, uh, Stardust Memories from Woody Allen, uh, mm. Zelig from Woody Allen. You've got uh, Elephant Man, Raging mm-hmm. Bull, Ooh. Uh, Rumblefish. Sure. Ooh, I know you're a big fan of Rumblefish. What about the outside? Broadway, Danny Rose. Mm. Uh, Last Picture Show is way earlier than that, but uh, Peter Bogdanovich of Sopranos fame. He also does that same thing in Paper Moon. And it's curious, mm. these people, like this era where people are turning back, looking at the 50s and being like, remember artisanal film craft? And it's like, well, what about it? And then I wonder, did they make the sets black and white themselves? So the characters would think in black and white? Um, No, I'm sorry. That's only Roma. Oh, I was going to say, I don't really know what the point of that would be, Jer. Why would you do something like that? It seems elaborate and unnecessary. Exactly. Oh dear! So, uh, what do you think of Veronica Voss? You like it? Yeah, I like this movie. Yeah, I, I think I um, I would want to watch it again because mm-hmm. I feel like there's more to this movie, like on a thematic level, than I'm mm-hmm. picking up on. Because um, yeah. like, I, I found that it, like, I especially because it's again we're in the context of the BRD trilogy about mm-hmm. about uh, West Germany at this time. We have the same era. 1950s female protagonist, uh, post-war yep. Germany. We have American soldiers lingering, hiding around drug ad- addicts and uh, drug addiction. What does that mean in terms of power and uh, 
the history that's going on? What's Fassbinder's interest in this subject matter? I, I, I just mm-hmm. don't – this guy made like what, 40 films in a very short period of time. He died at 36, 37. Active Man shot that Berlin Alexander Platz that we'll be watching uh, later this year. I'm curious. I want to read more about this guy. He's uh, he's fascinating me. He hasn't made a, a dud yet. Well, what other info is there out there on him? I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to dig. find out. I guess I'm have to read some interviews or something. Mm, Maybe read, read some theory. I know you. Fan I know. Theory? I know. Yeah, fan theories about uh, wayfinder devices in Exegol. <laughs> I was gonna say that sounds like uh, some nice fan fiction there. Yeah, you know, so, well, bringing well, back the roots. So then, RJ. Yo, what, what did you think of this Veronica Voss? So I'll tell you straight. Halfway through this movie, I was kind of like on the fence. Yep. Because I was like, there's things that I really like. Yep. And I think it's going to a place. But then I was at, at the same time, I was like, but then there's this other stuff. And I'm not sure if I'm really on board with that. Okay. And it, and it wasn't like anything big. It was, uh, I think this movie's got, it's got a good slow burn and it's got things set up nicely. And I don't think anything is unnecessary or like things can be cut from it but uh, there were a few times where i thought like getting to where it was trying to go took a little too long yeah um so like halfway through i was like i don't know if i like this as much as the other Fazbinder movies mm-hmm. and then uh when you get kind of the reveal later on later like with the doctors and what's going on and all that stuff and it kind of all comes together i was like shit i was like i kind of wish i was given this more uh time of day here and i kind of had the thought like you i was like i got I, maybe i should rewatch this thing and like now that i know where it kind of finishes off not that like yeah. i don't think it's a big twist or anything like that right. like it they they lay it out before but it's like i said i didn't really expect it to get as bleak as it did near the end mm-hmm. and i was like oh fuck i was like shit this is a it's a real good sad movie i was like i should have uh i didn't realize that and it was like I guess that maybe that's the point. I don't know. What's the point of no, cinema? I, but I, I agree. I, I, the first yeah. half, I was kind of like just admiring the how beautiful the movie was. The and then, uh, yeah, then the second half kicks in, and that's when the story, I think, becomes uh, a lot more engaging. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and that was kind of – that was my like my biggest takeaway from it was I, I really liked where the story ended up. I just thought getting there took a little bit uh, – it took a little bit like there were certain things I was like, I was like, I don't know, like uh, this, this guy this journalist, like what's his deal. And then this other guy and this lady and she's a actress. And I was like, well, well, I don't know. But I do like the idea of like this elite covert operation of like scam psychiatrists that are like <laughs> taking people in and just ruining and ruining their lives to the point of just straight out murdering people. I was like, I, I thought that was really cool. Um, I I kind of wish I had more of that. Not that um, you you do get enough with between Veronica Voss or uh, every, like the whole time I was watching this, I just kept thinking of Veronica Vaughn. I don't know why it was just in my mind. I was like that Veronica Vaughn. Uh, so her, um, the other reporter lady, uh, our uh, cool American guy who's just just there, and then uh, that old couple. That nice, sweet old couple, Jarrett, that mm-hmm. uh, goes out. I was like, like, so you get enough of uh, like that kind of stuff, seeing how people are affected by certain things and and drugs and treatment. Is this the cure for wellness, Jarrett? I don't know. Is it? <laughs> I don't know. Just to say. I have to ask Gore Verbinski. Gore. Uh, but yeah, no, like by the time it ended, I enjoyed it quite a bit it was just during during the ride it was a little bumpy so it's definitely i don't really i mean i don't really rewatch criterion movies because it's like we can barely watch the one or i can barely watch the one for each week but it's one that i was like well you know maybe now that i know that i enjoy the ending i'll rewatch it one day and take more out of it so right i'll give them that yeah it was good it was good i liked it yep you know you know you know jer you know, but yeah, it's uh like all that camera stuff we talked about before. I, I really like the lens flare thing and the lighting and it's just a real pretty movie. Like uh, the screenshot I put out today on the Instagram is those old people. Because mm-hmm. uh, I, I for one, I thought it was kind of funny 
uh, I was like, most people won't know that the severity of what's happened in this picture. They'll just think they're tired. Oh, they, uh, they, they slept. Yeah, they're just sleeping. But I also, I thought like that scene, the way it was like framed up and stuff, I was like, man, that looks good. It's like, I like how they're showing these two old dead people. Nice. Real nice. Uh, so that was good. The lighting was good. And uh, I do like where the story uh, goes because I wasn't really expecting it to get to that kind of that kind of place. But uh, yeah, there are just a few bumps in the road. That's all I'd say. Nothing, nothing bad. Nothing that would keep me from like suggesting it to other people. But uh, you know, it gets there. You know. You know. You know, Jer. It gets there. I'm aware. Yeah. So, uh, any other lingering thoughts on uh, Veronica Vaughn? Oh, I don't know. I'm just kind of scamming here uh, an essay off Criterion site about the production history of the oh, film, but uh, nothing too lurid so far, but uh, okay. maybe my reading comprehension is not what it used to be. It's actually very, very long. <laughs> I didn't know you could read at all. I'm, I'm full of surprises. To be honest. What did you, uh, what other movies got nice aging star uh, starlets there, you know? Talking about Sunset Boulevard. Uh, if this one? was a subgenre, Veronica Voss, Is Sunset true? Boulevard, Scott, Roger wow. Rabbit. I guess he's a. He's, I mean, it's, I guess it's like the aging starlet. That's kind of the. Mm-hmm. It's about the the woman who uh-huh. can't who who can't uh, give up her beauty yeah. or is wilted. I I don't know off the top of my head. Speaking of Roger Rabbit, this guy kind of reminded me of like German, uh, you know. Bob Hoskins. Yeah, yes. A little bit. Because there was a few times I was like, man, is that Bob Hoskins? And I was like, wait a minute. You still have to watch Killer Condom. That's that's the uh, that's Real? The, that's the German Bob Hoskins. That's the German Bob Hoskins? Oh, yeah. Did you mention that before? Killer Condom? Well, no, I, I remember that, but like that German Bob Hoskins, isn't that? I probably did. Hmm. <laughs> Big if true. Look him up. Udo Semel. Udo Semel. Okay, let's S- see. S-A-M-E-L. S-A-M-E-L. Udo Semel. Oh! Yeah, he, he's there. Oh, yeah. He's pretty good. I like his little glasses. Oh. They're pretty cute. Pretty cute. Pretty cute. Uh, you want to hear about who hates Veronica Voss? I guess. Okay. <laughs> First up, we got one star from Phil Dias Nugent. Ooh, Ted Nugent. Rainer Werner Fassbinder's last film released during his lifetime stars Russell Zeck in a stilted, uncharismatic performance as a mm. washed-up film star. In Fassbinder's spin on the Sunset Boulevard theme, the aging diva living in the past as a defenseless victim, a wraith in the mercy of murderers who fill her with drugs and drain her finances. Unless you're deeply in love with Fassbinder's wilted stylistic flourishes and BDSM worldview, it's torturous. <laughs> The black and white photography looks as if the movie was shot through a sheet of ice, which is kind of appropriate, but wears thin as a visual conceit. What do they mean, BDSM? <laughs> like, did, did I, I miss something, or is that I, like a? I know that's like I have no idea. I know what it is, but I don't understand uh, how it relates to uh, this. this. Yeah, I don't know. Well, that's what I mean. I was like, did I fucking miss something, or like, what's going on here? Okay, so Phil Dias Nugent, Ted Nugent, uh, all the favorite films are what you'd expect, just Criterion movies. Okay. Things like Night of the Hunter, five-star films. Uh, let's go to some one-star films here, Jared. Have you ever heard of a little movie called... Oh, wait, that's not what I was going to talk about. <laughs> wait a minute. There's some... Uh, it's, I don't know, Gummo? Yeah, I've heard of Gummo. Would you give Gummo half a star? No. What about Jack, that hit Robin Williams film? Would you give that half a star? Probably not. Jarrett. Here's one we can agree on. Roar. Oh, come on. That is not a half star film. No, not if you know a good time. No way at all. So, uh, I mean, a lot of the half star films are things you'd expect. A lot of the five star films are things you, you would expect. But, you know, Roar. They, uh, this person, one of their favorite films is The Long Goodbye. Never heard of that. Sounds yeah. good. It's not bad. Sounds good, apparently. What else we got? Next up, 
Heretic, who I'm pretty sure we've heard from before. Yes, yes. One star. They killed the director, but drugs don't make this predictable, cliched melodrama any less corny. Which I guess is a one way to ignore, I guess, the uh, influence of Douglas Sirk on Fastbinder's movies in his love of melodrama and this mm. sort of thing. The Sirk touch? Is that a, a thing? Um, the Sirk stroke? Oh, you. Uh, so yeah, Heretic has come up a bunch. Let's look at some recent activity from Heretic. Richard Jewell, a half a star. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Force Awake, uh, or no, Rise of Skywalker, three stars, Jer. Ooh. Three whole stars. I yep. think that's a little generous, but, uh, you know, what are you going to do? What no, are you going to do? Nothing, nothing. Okay. Axel Cock. Ooh. Two and a half stars. Okay. Veronica Voss captures a dark and confusing period in German history in equally dark and confusing cinematic terms. Its experimentation of wildly varying quality in editing, lighting, and music, giving off the feeling of seeing an early work rather than what is in fact the last of Fassbinder's films to be released in his lifetime. Was it? Yes. But, oh yeah, so we didn't, we didn't really notice, we didn't mention the... Uh, the the crossfades the use of like those edits between scenes where he just do like he was just trying out different uh like you know irises and uh just like different effects in between just because mm. very very uh attention seeking which is also like goes along with his use of font in a lot of his mm. movies he was he's uh, he's always uh having fun i i i don't know the one thing i would say that people get hung up on with him is how mm-hmm. dark his subject matter is but i actually do find his movies like pretty funny yeah i agree uh there's some nice humor there and like they're dark too but it's like i don't think anything he does in his movies are out of like out of the realm of like being believable it's like this is just just fucking how life is man yep i thought at least i don't know you know you know what's some funny stuff you liked funny stuff i liked in this movie specifically yeah um i'd have to think about it it's always in the okay. moment, though. It's not like there's like, ha, ha, I'm going to remember yeah. that forever either. Like, that's just mm-hmm. not how it feels. But just like yeah. like the lighting, like the use of the lighting in this movie constantly made me laugh because it's yep. so uh, over the top, but in, mm-hmm. a, but in a good way. Yeah. yeah that, that you feel like, I don't know, I felt like I was, inside, I was on the inside of his jokes. If there's a joke. <laughs> if there's a joke, I don't know. I could be wrong. You know, it's a joke. Ac- Axel Cox movies. No, I'm just kidding. It's uh, they don't have a lot of uh, five star things. Things like Midnight Cowboy, The Apartment, pretty good stuff. Ringu, Cleo from five to seven, The Lighthouse, Frozen. So you know some good movies. Only one half star film. Ooh, I saw the devil. What? Weird. That's weird, eh? That is weird. And then like one star films. There's some bad ones in here, but Wayne's World one star. Hmm. Little suspect. Little suspect. Jared. Jekyll and Hyde. You like that movie, don't you? <laughs> Jekyll? Yeah, Jekyll. Right. You know him. Of course. Yeah. Good friends. Good yeah, dude. Good, good buds. Good dude. Good dude. Nice. So, yeah, uh, the movie, uh, it's good. I'm liking, these trilo- yeah, it I'm liking this trilogy. I'm it's not bad. Curious uh, if we'll go on a high note or not. With, Hopefully with next week's, but that's that's for next week's business. Hopefully, and then uh, I I think we mentioned before. I think it was the right call, letting them breathe. Oh yeah, taking them one oh, at a you, time. Yeah, doing this three movies in once would have been a terrible yeah. idea. And we'll get the yep. same difference uh, next week. And we can visit talk about the the themes of all three films and how this trilogy hangs together. Uh, then, are there themes in this one? Stay tuned. <gasps> After the break, locking RJ in that room with one toilet that doesn't go anywhere. And I mean, all, the, all that ragooey infused thing that he always talks about eating. That no, Gabagool? No. Your, 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 your secret recipe. Oh, that thing has no name, dude. The thing that has no name. Mm-hmm. When, when is when's the cookbook coming out? The the creeps cookbook. Uh, I mean, if there was an avid fan out there that could start from day one, because I, I think we've talked about many many recipes. 
Well, work on it. Huh? Work, on, work on that. Someone can. Huh? So after the break, Archie's locked in a room with one <laughs> toilet that doesn't work with the thing that has no name. <laughs> <laughs>